Hello, today I will be going over 2004 AP Calculus BC free response question number six. In this problem, you will not be using a calculator. The topic is Taylor series. The question asks, let f be the function given by f of x equals sine of 5x plus pi over 4, and let p of x be the third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 0. Part A asks, find p of x. The structure of a Taylor series of the function f at a looks like the given power series, where c of n equals the nth derivative of a over n factorial. To find p of x, we'll start off by finding f of 0, the first derivative of f at 0, the second derivative of f at 0, and the third derivative of f at 0. They would equal square root of 2 over 2, 5 square root of 2 over 2, negative 25 square root of 2 over 2, and negative 125 square root of 2 over 2, respectively. After doing so, we can plug it back in into the power series to find the third degree Taylor polynomial. Each of your terms would include your constant and x minus a, in this case 0, to the power of n. Make sure you don't forget to include n factorial in each of your constants. Our answer would then be p of x equals square root of 2 over 2 plus 5 square root of 2 over 2 x minus 25 square root of 2 over 2 times 2 factorial times x squared minus 125 square root of 2 over 2 times 3 factorial times x cubed. You will be deducted for any extra terms, so make sure you know how many terms are needed. Part B asks, find the coefficient of x to the power of 22 in the Taylor series for f about x equals 0. Using part A, you would find that the general constant c of n equals positive or negative 5 to the power of n times square root of 2 over 2 times n factorial. To find the sign of a constant, you would look for a pattern. f of 0 is positive. The first derivative of f at 0 is positive. The second derivative of f at 0 is negative and the third derivative of f at 0 is negative as well. And then it cycles again to positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, positive, and so on and so forth. When you're finding the sign, make sure you remember that the pattern starts off with f of 0, not the first derivative of f at 0. Using that, you would find that the coefficient of x to the power of 22 is negative 5 to the power of 22 times square root of 2 all divided by 2 times factorial of 22. Part C asks, use the Lagrange error bound to show that the absolute value of f of 1 tenth minus p of 1 tenth is less than 1 one hundredth. As review, I have written out the Taylor's inequality, which is also known as the Lagrange error bound. Some important things to remember are that the absolute value of n plus 1 derivative of f at c and the absolute value of x minus a to the power of n plus 1 should both be maximized. The absolute value of f of 1 tenth minus p of 1 tenth is basically equal to r of 1 tenth, which is the remainder of the third degree Taylor polynomial. You want to maximize this inequality on the interval of 0 to 1 tenth. To find what the fourth derivative of f at c would be when it's maximized, we would have to first find the fourth derivative of f, which would equal 625 times sine of 5x plus pi over 4. As we know, sine can only hit a maximum of 1, so that would mean that our max would be 625. To maximize x minus a to the power of n plus 1, we would realize that x equals 0, and then therefore a would have to be 1 tenth. Our overall inequality would look like this. The absolute value of r of 1 tenth is less than or equal to 625 divided by 4 factorial times 1 tenth to the power of 4. This would equal to 1 over 384, which is less than 100. Therefore, we have proved that the absolute value of f of 1 tenth minus p of 1 tenth which is also the remainder, is less than 1 one hundredth. Part D asks, let g be the function given by g of x, which equals the integral of f of t from 0 to x, 
Write the third degree Taylor polynomial for g about x equals 0. We can start off by plugging in f of t. We have already gotten part of f of t in part a when we found p of x. But this time, instead of getting the third degree polynomial, which would be p of x, we need to get the second degree po Taylor polynomial. Because when you integrate, the power of your variable will increase by 1. From there, integrate normally. Your answer will be g of x equals square root of 2 over 2 times x plus 5 square root of 2 over 4 times x squared minus 25 square root of 2 over 12 times x cubed. Some other AP problems with a similar topic of Taylor polynomials would be 2005 calculus BC FRQ number 6 and 2007 calculus BC FRQ number 6 linked below in the description. Thanks for watching. Please check the description for more resources on this topic.